and you're like, this is awesome. This church has done a lot, but you won't realize not a single person has talked to you. Not a single person said, hi, how are you doing? You had to find a map to get to your seat in the first place. And nobody pointed out where it was. You notice that people were sitting there talking to each other, and you overhear their conversations about business practices and, and how's life going but not really caring and how are your kids and, and all these other things and you notice that man this church has got a lot of people in it and you start looking for their ministries and you notice that they have a lot of social ministries a youth ministry that see, that has about 800 kids 45 youth ministers all paid well well and you notice that they have a great senior citizen for social time. They have all these social gatherings. And then you look for what, what kind of ministry are you doing? What are you doing to affect the world, to change the world? And you can hardly find anything. They have a great, they have a great covered dish supper on their table. Let's go across town to the middle of the town. To uh, old timers, back the old timers Episcopal Methodist Church. Episcopal, I, I haven't figured it out long ago. Episcopal Methodist Church. Episcopal Episcopal Methodist Church. We'll call them back. We haven't offended those two people yet. And the church has been there for 128 years, and still has two original members. <laughs> matter of fact, you know the church I'm talking about. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the average age of the church is 62 and a half. <laughs> they had a youth ministry, but they grew up, and they're all 30, and they're still considered youth. <laughs> we had a couple of kids come in one day, and, they, and they're still talking about the day that Johnny, who is now 35, trashed the entire boys' bathroom and hasn't been the same since. But the church has been established in the community, and people travel 20 miles to go to church, and they meet together, and they fellowship together, or they talk to each other, they worship because that's what they're supposed to do. And the church, the community knows the name of Old Timers Church. Episcopal Methodist Church. And they know that they used to be something big. They had a name. They really affected this community. We love the church building. It's pretty. It's got a huge stained glass window. Love that stained glass window. And if anybody messes it up, they're going to hell. If anybody sneezes in church, they're, well, God bless them, but they better sit in the back because we don't have that kind of thing. Their worship is solid, stolid, and stoic. Nobody says anything to anybody outside of talking about the weather or their kids or grandkids. Two zombie churches. They both have the appearance of life. Both of them have people in their churches all the time. Both of them have something going on in their church. But they're not doing anything in the community. People know of St. Mary's. Presbo Bacteria and Holy Ghost Church, I believe. In Christ, whatever. They know of it. They hail it. The guy has had five books written about he wrote five different books and they all make you feel good about yourself and not being effective and telling people about Christ you start a conversation with about Christ in that church and they're like oh, yeah I didn't go to church no do you know Jesus I go to church have you ever had a conversation with somebody who says hey do you know Jesus about let me tell you about Jesus I, I go to church I'm fine well, that might mean they live near a church and go twice a year, but they're fine. And then we go to all time old timers about this church. It passed Pisca Methodist Church, sorry. Old timers church. And they have people in their church. They have people in worship. 
faithful pew sitters every week. Matter of fact, if you sit in the wrong seat, they will point to you and say, hey, that's my seat. I need you to move over. I'm sorry. If that ever happens to you, do the right thing and move. It's okay. Um, you don't want to be excommunicated. You laugh. You laugh. You laugh now. But the moment it happens to you, and they they have a life where they had a name that meant something, that means something to the community. But what have they done for the community now? Here we have the Church of Sardis. Let me tell you a few things about the town of Sardis. Bring it back to the this this context right here. Sardis was a beautiful was a, was a, a city that was basically basically up against a canyon wall. They were well protected. They were well guarded. They were well entrenched. Cyrus uh, came. One of the conquerors came up to this place and he looked at it and he's like, "There is no way." that I can get into this city and overcome it. There is no way, this, these walls are unbreachable. This, this city is unbreachable. I can't conquer it, it's unconquerable. Because it's so strong and set up, and it's so fortified. So he looks at one of his lieutenants, he says, I want you to watch this place, I want you to find the weak spot. Well, one day while they were watching the uh, he saw this one of the soldiers of the city come down off of a small trackway to get a helmet that he dropped off the wall. And he, then he climbed up and he goes, he climbed back then and he goes, that's how we go back in there. So they rallied their troops and they rallied the team and they got to the one place where the, that was pointed out by the lieutenant and they went in just to find that there was nobody who was fighting against them. Because the town of Sardis had gotten so complacent and so careless in their jobs, in their city, that they were not, they didn't they, they said, we can't be breached. They were breached, they were taken over. Not just once, not just twice, but time and time again, because they said nobody can conquer us. Nobody can take us over. This is the city of Sardis. Was hailed as a capital city of a, of a, of a kingdom called Lydia. The star jewel of this town. They loved this. This town was sought after and well protected. They grew complacent and they were overcome time and time again. Jesus is saying this thing about the church. He says, be careful not to do this, not to fall into these traps. And Jesus tells them this. I think it's, and he looks at them in verse 2 and he says, wake up and strengthen that remain, things that remain, which were about to die, for I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. I think so many times as a church, we get so stuck, we get so complacent in what we're doing. I think so many times as Christians, we get complacent in what we're doing. We think, I have done so many great things. I have done good things. I may not be great, but I've done some good things, and our church has done well, so now let's just sit back and rest on our laurels and figure out what God's going to do next. Like, you know, whatever. It becomes so easy not to venture out of our walls. It's come so easy not to go out and serve the community and find out what's wrong with them and why, what needs to happen. What can I do to replace? What can I do to help? It becomes so easy to sit back in our churches, hide behind our walls, and let the world be what it's going to be as long as we don't let our Christianity, our religious practices, go bankrupt. As long as we show up for church on time, as long as we show up for church on a regular basis, as long as we worship, we sing the right songs, we pray, play the right music, we have the right Bible studies, 
and have the right evangelists come in, we're fine.